Iran shells out four billion line of credit to Assad's government in Syria. They've extended two lines of credit worth a total of four billion dollars to Syria's embattled president Assad. They say here that it will finance the needs of Syrian oil and oil derivatives. Russia says our missiles sale to Assad will deter hotheads from intervening. The Israeli minister uh, said that Ben Gurion Airport would be in range of these S 300s. Can't fathom why Moscow aiding brutal Assad regime. Defense minister says Israel will know what to do if weapons reach Damascus. Russia's deputy foreign minister said Tuesday Moscow would deliver anti uh, basically yeah, anti aircraft missiles to Syria as planned in order to deter unnamed hotheads from turning the civil war there into an international conflict made the comments two weeks after Israeli Prime Minister Natyana flew to Russia to implore Putin to cancel the sale. More Russian news. Russia criticizes U.S.-backed anti-Syria draft resolution. I never even heard of this thing. But he goes on here and he says, To my huge astonishment, we have learned that apart from the co-authors of this resolution, a U.S. delegation is most actively promoting this completely unwholesome idea, says Lavrov, describing the resolution as odious and unilateral. It's sponsored by Qatar and Turkey and condemns what it calls Syria's use of foreign combats or combatants in the fight against the militants. On May 7th, Russia and the U.S. agreed in Moscow to convene an international conference on Syria. He said, we need everyone to work honestly and not allow double standards, i.e., you know, the, the West is basically funding these, quote, militants. But Syria can't get, um, can't get help from, say, uh, uh, Libyan uh, Hezbollah fighters or Iran. Russia has also been a big pusher for Iran to be a part of this conference. Israeli defense chief indicates if Russia uh, ships advanced missiles to Syria, they could be hit. So the defense chief from Israel said Tuesday a Russian plan to supply sophisticated anti-aircraft missiles to Syria was a threat and signal that Israel is prepared to use force to stop the delivery. Also, a side note for news, remember uh, Israel is caught actually uh, with a fake rock and surveillance equipment spying on uh, Russia and they're uh, basically um, spying on their um, on their uh, fleet, their naval fleet. Israel has already carried out several airstrikes in Syria in recent months. Syria will retaliate against any Israeli aggression, says the foreign minister for Syria. So he says Syria will not let any Israeli aggression go unanswered without retaliation. It says that it will be the same size as the aggression and the same type of weapons will be used. That Syria would take part in the upcoming talks in Geneva without any precondition. Also noted that any deal reached in the Geneva talks uh, would be put to a referendum inside Syria. And lastly, they said that one of the conditions would be that uh, Assad would remain president until the next presidential election in 2014. Uh, this is my website, Global Government News or GGNOnline.com. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man, the trolls. Uh, this is at this point apparently they didn't like it uh, me showing this website. So um, either way, here it is um, on YouTube. My channels are DDarko2012 and DDarko2013. Yeah, we had a, um, a more trolls than we usually do in the last set of videos. Prior to the devastating tornado, did you receive a more significant level of aerial aerosol spraying? Uh, this is for U.S. residents. Uh, 34 minutes left uh, to vote. So far, 60% of voters said yes, they have received heavy uh, spraying prior to the devastating tornado. 20% said no, followed by 20% saying not sure. Um, just a side note, too, is uh, recently, I, I, well, just today, just I saw today, they're doing some um, sp some kind of specialized uh, weather modification with HARP or, uh, or whatever the system they actually call it. I'm sure it's not HARP. I'm sure there's some kind of system that they have that is unknown to the, to the majority of the public, and they just let us talk about heart. But I just use that as an overgeneralized term for the weather modification that I know is taking place. Uh, real high altitude, uh, real fine too. Um, um, uh, you know, waves and ripples in, in these uh, chemical clouds that they sprayed. Uh, that's what happened. That's what I noticed prior to the tornado. That's the point I'm trying to make. That tornado prior to that, I remember seeing the, uh, some real um, high altitude um, activity. I guess you could say. I also um, remember coming across an article yesterday from this uh, weatherspace.com um, about how the Northeast was just being pulsed immensely. 
so uh, who knows what they got coming to him. All right, we left off talking about Israel. Prime Minister lashes out at anti-Semitic Israel critics. Natiana urges Jerusalem Conference to fight and win the battle for fair representation of the Jewish state. He spoke out on Tuesday against what he described as a rising trend of anti-Semitism around the world, calling for an international effort to combat the phenomenon. That would be kind of equal to um, uh, to people uh, call, I mean, basically when the U.S. does what it does, and it's not really in the people's name. Uh, you know, expanding whatever, expanding the empire, or just you know having bases, trying to stage coups, uh, creating instability, say in Venezuela and that. Um, you know, people could say, "Oh, there's a rise in Amer uh, anti-Americanism." Well, I wonder you know, why do you think that is? Uh, me personally, I think that they're trying to um, take whatever the U.S. name is or whatever it was, and just take it into the ground. Um, to the whole world if they don't already hates hates what everything that the US stands for and then maybe they'll take over the reins or whatever global you know uniting the, the North American uh, Union and the European Union but the key is to just kill any sort of uh, nation state or nationalism um, and the, of course the irony of course is that they th they can call themselves the Jewish state you know um, Everywhere else, it's multicultural. I mean, these are policies that they push, along with all the other policies. That's what we covered on Monday. But they they can be a, nas a nation state. They're the only one. They also don't have to answer about nuclear weapons. And they can also carry out um, ethnic cleansing and genocide. Um, and nobody will say a damn thing, so. He says, what was unfashionable is now becoming fashionable again. Um, he says here, well, I don't hate the Jews, I just don't think that they should have a state, or effectively that their state is an illegitimate one that doesn't have the right to exist, as Natiano asserting that to deny the Jewish people's right to a state was anti-Semitic. Actually, that they're trying to, they were trying to draft a law in California about that, where if you talk about um, you know, pro-Palestinian or anti-Israel, uh, that it, that was actually considered anti-Semitic. So they, they were trying to make that a law that you couldn't do that. It's mostly for protesters. Obama asked Pentagon for a Syrian no-fly zone plan, so Pentagon spokesman sent a following statement to the Daily Beast after the story posted this is from the 28th. There is no new planning underway. The Joint Chief Staff, along with the relevant combatant commanders, continue to conduct prudent planning for a range of possible military options. So, with that being said, let's be clear, establishing a no-fly zone is an act of war. So it says, uh, kudos to Josh Rogan for breaking the news that the White House has had the Pentagon to draw plans for a no-fly zone inside of Syria, but wouldn't it be a more powerful story without the euphemism? So It says it's typical journal journalism called a no-fly zone, but it makes a mistake. It obscures the gravity of the news. It says here's an alternative uh, version. The White House has asked the Pentagon to draw plans for bombing multiple targets inside Syria, constantly surveilling Syrian airspace along uh, U.S. allies and uh, shooting down Syrian warplanes and helicopters that try to fly around perhaps for months. And uh, Israel has already kind of established a, a buffer zone as well. Near their border, Syrian rebel alliance openly threatens ethnic cleansing. We've already covered this, so I'm not gonna go through it, but it was basically them. Um, a FSA spokesman said in an interview that minority communities would be wiped off the map if the regime forces managed to capture the city of al Qasir, which they didn't. Um, but see, they're able, again, they're able to carry out um, ethnic genocide. Nobody says anything. In fact, they get support. Uh, they kid kidnap UN workers. They get support, political and, and financial support. Qatar seeks to send Yemen's military elite to fight alongside the Free Syrian Army. Qatar has been a staunch supporter of the Free Syrian Army. <laughs> they're, they're the bulk of the funding. Uh, is now looking to enroll Yemen's military elite to fight alongside the Arab-backed militias. Arab-backed militias. Some people call them terrorists. Okay, we'll call them Arab-backed militias, not uh, Salafist jihadists, in a bid to offset Assad's recent advances against the opposition. That's not, they, so in other words, not the civil war. They're talking about the invasion. The status of the invasion is, is not going well for Israel and Zionists. Obama lifts ban on Guantanamo transfers to Yemen. So maybe this is the uh, Yemen crack elite troops that they're talking about when Obama just lifted on the 23rd a self-imposed ban on transferring Guantanamo Bay detainees to Yemen where leadership of people has improved blah 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 right so Syrian rebels stole the UN armored personnel carriers Israel warns virtually indestructible vehicles could be used for attacks yeah see the key is is that um, is that nobody will come to do Israel's dirty work unless there's some kind of imminent threat of terrorists even if 
even if the terrorists themselves hate Israel's guts, they, they don't know that they're actually working for them. Syrian army destroys trucks smuggling oil into Turkey. Syrian troops have destroyed several trucks smuggling crude oil into neighboring Turkey. This is interesting, of course, because of this article that we covered last month on the 22nd. EU eases Syria oil embargo to assist the terrorists. European Union foreign ministers on Monday eased an oil embargo against Syria with the aim of helping the terrorists to fight and take over the sovereign government of Syria. Terrorists seek to drag, drag Lebanon into a Syrian crisis. Uh, moving down here, we have here an interview with this uh, professor from a Lebanese university. It's quote is saying, well, actually, Lebanon was dragged into this crisis in Syria by some of these gangs going into Syria and trying to attack the Syrian army, the Syrian National Army, and also by some of these statements from these terrorist groups. Three Lebanese soldiers killed by gunmen near Syrian border. Reports say that the gunmen stopped at the checkpoint and brutally beat the soldiers before executing them. Lebanese, Lebanese military established at checkpoints earlier this year after claims that the Syrian rebels were using the remote town as a hiding place after attacks inside Syria. No one took, uh, uh, no one claimed uh, the attack. Hezbollah denounced the attack that targeted the Lebanese army. So it's here the attack on armies and attack against all Lebanese. So is this, again, is this a proxy to, to drag them in there? Lebanon in the war? Who knows? Lavrov Hezbollah fighters deploy in Syria to protect religious shrines. The foreign minister warned against the increasing flow of foreign fighters who are coming to Syria from North Africa and Europe. The statement was made after he said since the beginning of the crisis we warned against internationalizing the conflict, yet the flow of foreign fighters to Syria, those coming from Libya, North Africa, Middle East, Europe, and other regions has been steadily increasing. He says here that this comes in order to protect the Shiite holy sites as far as the Hezbollah fighters in Syria and Hezbollah does not conceal that fact. It says here, uh, Nasrallah, as I always promised you victory, I now promise you another one. And a big, um, a big ally of uh, the United States, UK, Israel, and the Gulf states, King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia reported to be clinically dead, according to reports from a London-based journalist. Following failure of his heart, lungs, and kidneys, he's not been publicly seen for many months. Regional uh, African force created to tackle coups and wars. African leaders agreed to immediately create a military rapid reaction force to deal with regional coups, rebellions, and wars, seeking to reduce the continent's reliance on foreign troops and funds for its defense. Uh, you know, in other words, so France doesn't have to go down there and do the work themselves. Um, you know, as far as colonizing and, and taking the continent uh, over again. So that's all that really means. I mean, if, 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 if the African Union was actually for African people, um, Gaddafi would have never been overthrown. Um, Bagbo would have never been overthrown. Um, they wouldn't be establishing drone bases uh, in northwest Africa and near Somalia. And, and um, they would have in instituted a gold diner, right? An African uh, currency that would have united them. So this, you know, this just tells me that they're still working for um, outsiders, globalists. NATO to give technical support to Libya. So NATO will give us technical advice in terms of training. We will have technical support and we will have been helped in training if we need so. France calls for action against Islamists in southern Libya. France urged African nations on Tuesday to make a concerted effort to tackle a growing Islamist threat in the deserts of southern Libya. And talking about what we were talking about with Africa, uh, the UN actually just authorized uh, 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 troops for Mali. The head of Libya's parliament resigns over law banning Gaddafi era officials from senior posts. And get this, he says, all must comply with the law out of respect for legitimacy and institutionalization of democracy. Yeah, right. They had more of a, a local democracy uh, than, than, than most other countries. I wonder how much he's, he's getting paid. Pakistan's Sharif courts Islamist leader to help with Taliban talks. The godfather of the Taliban remains influential. So he's trying to negotiate with the Taliban, drawing on the Islamist leader's credibility and influence within the movement. They plan to do that? First U.S. drone strike since election hits Pakistan, killing seven. Sharif actually promised to end the drone strikes, but just like what they're talking about with talks with the Taliban, it doesn't really matter what he wants. The politics, the military is real strong in that country and they have to be along with it too. U.S. drone has been shot down in southern Somalia. Militants were... Rand Corporation pushes uh, an idea of a U.S. port in India. 
in the event of an offensive against China. John Kerry touts drone strikes as dramatic success. So aerial assassination is success. Obama's speech suggests possible expansion of drone killings, while the Navy is considering 3D printing of drones. This is GGN. I'm Darko. Thank you.